Welcome back to Enigmatica 2 Expert Mode. I've been doing a bit of crafting off camera and we're just going to upgrade our existing mob farm. Uh, make sure I get out, out underneath the uh, sky uh, to basically automatic operation. And we're going to do that just by using a solar generator. So just as we've done before, are you generating any power? Yeah, you are producing power. Uh, that's good. And then we'll just put an energy cube in on the other side. I'll knock that block out later. Um, let's get there. So one energy cube and it's starting to build. That's good. And then we just want to connect up the rest with our energy conduit. So you can see I've got a crusher right here, which now start getting power. At least it should once this thing outputs to the right side. Um, I want output to the front. So you should get power. You have got power. Good. I've also put one range upgrade. We don't need any more because it's a two by two shaft internally. So um, uh, once it gets to this point, it's a two by two shaft anyway. So I don't need any further uh, stuff there. I don't think. Yeah, there it is. You can see it's visible inside and that should be fine, I would think. Um, so that's done. We then need to just sort out where the essence is going to go. And that's where, oh, let me just put these torches away. I was just separating them back into coal. Um, torches, uh, not torches. <laughs> Getting distracted now. Not torches. Um, we want to send the essence somewhere. Now, I normally do a, um, a buffer for this. So we want one ender tank, which is going to be this, this one right here. Uh, this is going to be set up uh, right about here. Okay. Uh, Granted, it looks dark because of the shaders, but you can see it's half full. It's half full because the other one of this tank is underneath the other mob crusher, the one in our, that we're going to be using to, to kill things. Uh, to kill things for loot, I should say. It's underneath that because we want to drain the other mob crusher into this as well. And this is also going to drain into this, and then both of well, both of them, but all the, the other end, is going to drain into a drum, which is then going to drain into a second ender tank and this will be our source ender tank for anything including the um, mob duplicator our witch spawner, spawner when we get to witches for blood magic and stuff like that so we're going to be using both of them for the time being however all we need to do to get started is get a basically pressurized fluid conduit and our yetter wrench we basically need to say all is active extract all the essence from there and at the top just always insert and then that is that set up. That's pretty much it, I think. Um, is there anything else I need to do here? Well, hmm. This is going to start basic doing the job of our vacuum hopper. You know, we've got this vacuum hopper around here. Uh, this thing is pulling, well, one, it's got liquid XP, so we should probably think about pulling that out and then fluid dictionary converting it. That's a, a straightforward thing to do, but in the meantime, we're going to want to send stuff over here to our storage drawers or indeed to that trash can. Now, I did get a commenter saying that you are going to want a copy of all the possible drops of armor. Let me just go back and sleep through the night so you can see a little bit easier. You're going to want a uh, one, pot, one set of each of them. I don't have the powered uh, anvil yet, which we'll probably be using to repair stuff. Um, so that's going to be used to repair them for the sum of the time being. I'm just going to keep on discarding them just like we do normally. And oh, the other thing is I put an ender tether in there so that endermen don't warp away. That does mean, however, it'll draw you in if you're too close to it. So just make sure maybe that you move your ender tether a bit further away than mine is. I think it's got a 32 block range, something like that, but um, that'll do. Anyway, that does mean I'm probably going to want to send uh, items out of here. And I've got a vacuum hopper here, but items going to come out of this one around here. I think uh, what I'm actually going to do is move that one further away. Oh, no, I can't. No, um, <laughs> I would like both the vacuum hopper to up items and uh, output the XP on the same side, but it doesn't work that way. You have to ex export them onto two different sides. For now, I'm just going to ignore the liquid XP. Um, it'll just be discarded. That's that's not a problem. And then we'll just put in our item conduit coming around here. If I can get connected to it. There we go. Uh, this side is purely insert. And this side is purely extract. Um, uh, extract always active. And that's everything, I think. We've got power. We've got fluid. we got everything else. Let's turn this on and let's see if it actually works. So... Go to the top of our mob farm. 
Turn it on. And it should be pretty fast. Yep. Yep, it is pretty fast. You can see that that is going to be going up. Yep, it's going up. Good. So I can leave this here. Uh, I'm probably going to want another ender tether at some point over here for, well, endermen. But for the moment, that's fine. You can see items flowing out of here, and uh, that's everything being done. Is this draining or is it keeping it? I imagine it's not. Yeah, this is more than good enough. Okay, good. Back to our base uh, in the pyramid. This means uh, I need to go and get a drum made. Now, I did also add the the, uh, the reinforced large drum recipe. And let's see if it can actually make this. It can... Ooh, stone slabs are missing. Four stone slabs. Uh, they, they aren't terribly hard to make, it has to be said, but um, the system just doesn't know how to make them, and I'm not going to make them that often, so I don't really care about that. And, uh, yeah, now the system is going to need to craft quite a few things. Uh, 78 iron plates, uh, so we need to get all that started. Let me go and show you where I've got things set up so that you get the idea of how to set this up yourself. So underneath here, underneath our mob crusher, you'll see I have... Just move this further down. I have a couple of pressurized fluid conduits. This is going to pump everything from that mob crusher, the mob essence that is, straight down into this, which is this, the coupled uh, pair to the one over the mob farm. So this is our input to our system. We're then going to have a drum right underneath it. I can just switch this around like this and it'll output to the drum. And then the drum is going to output downwards using this pressurized fluid conduit into the second pair. This, this is the one that's over here. So we have the second pair ready. All that we need to do is go inside and um, basically supply that to the mob duplicator, which is over here. Um, I'm going to probably put it under here, I think. Yeah, so it doesn't really much matter where we put it, but it just needs to be somewhere, somewhere close by. Uh, that should do. I don't think there's any fluid stuff there already. Uh, up connection, there is... Inserts only. That's fine. Okay, so if I just put this one here. Um, is that the one I want? It is. I think. Yeah, that is the one I want. Okay, and then we'll just um, pop down. And we can then just configure it. We could even put it, well, we can't put it right underneath. Let's just do the up connection insert on pressurized. And then which side is it going to be? Oops. Which side is it going to be? It's going to be the east side. It tells you what the block there is. And always active. So that should be drawing out fluid essence. And that's pretty much everything at that point. Once we have the drum in the way, that is. Uh, the drum will then basically um, hack as a buffer and we'll always have... Oh, we don't even want that block. Not that I don't particularly need the brownstone in here, but uh, keep everything nice. Um, yeah, so everything is now configured and it will stay working. We just have to get the, the drum. And that's just going to wait for our system. So give me a second and then we'll come back. And our reinforced drum is now ready. A reinforced large drum, that is. There is a demonically gargantuan drum. Um, yeah, that involves a Klein bottle. And uh, I don't want to... Demonic large plate. No, let, let's, let's not worry about that. The reinforced one should be just fine, okay? Um, now, in case you're wondering why I'm using this second pair, um, I'm not sure if I already mentioned it, but we can just run uh, basically a conduit straight to the, the mob crusher or the mob duplicator over there. There's no problem doing that. It's just that in the future, I will be using this in more than one place. So we may as well have that uh, sorted, basically having this be automatic. And then I can just move uh, or create an ender tank wherever I like and get that particular channel, the, the, uh, the particular channel, which is the mob essence. So this is going to extract always active. So it will always basically empty into this drum. And you can see there is 4 million millibuckets. So that's basically 4,000 buckets of essence capacity in our system now. And then on the bottom, we have the obviously the ender tank itself. So we have pretty much everything we need handled there. And let's just fill in the gaps here. 
and uh, we're ready to go. Um, yeah, nothing else. That's done. That's done. So we can just place the floor again and uh, we're back up and running. So now uh, we should have a system that um, doesn't need refilling unless I run it out of space <laughs> and uh, we'll start generating as endermen or rather ender pearls as I like to call them ender pearls generating things yep just just hand the ender pearls don't need to do anything else and that will continue working now of course what I'm probably going to end up doing is exhausting that mob essence pretty quickly <laughs> gotta be said but uh, hey, it'll do for now. And uh, how many ender pearls have we got? Well, 34. That, that, that's going to be pretty good. Um, what I'd be tempted to do is to... There's only a few things that actually come out of this thing. Um, I don't want stone swords, that much is for certain. And um, what I think I can do is block them using Ender IO Conduit. We can just dump this straight into our um, AE2 system. We can just create an ender chest. Can I just create an ender chest? Do I already have an ender chest? Ender chest. Um, it's going to need one of these ender chests, unfortunately. But that's fine, because we have the eyes of ender now. And then can just generate one of these. Oh, it's going to need more ardite, isn't it? Yeah, and I have very little ardite. I need to go and just go and gather some from the, um, <laughs> from the, uh, the nether. But uh, that can just go straight into downstairs and be sorted from there okay so we now have as much ender pearls as we want to leave the system on to actually do and that's gonna work what i should also think about now is probably at this point we've got well we've got a decent melee weapon we don't have we don't have infinite flight i was thinking about maybe killing the wither Okay, because we can get Wither Skeleton Skulls just by swapping out the um, the uh, Imprisonment tool. We just go back to Wither Skeletons, and we should start generating the Wither Skeleton Skulls. So why don't I just get through to the daytime, and let's see whether this particular mob farm... It is nighttime. Look, night. Um, whether this particular mob farm will generate skulls. Otherwise, what we're probably going to need to do is some kind of alternative where I get skulls by beheading or something like that. But um, let's see if it accidentally, as a byproduct, produces them. With the skeleton skulls. And I need to add them, clearly, to uh, the Super Sam Muffler that's up here. Add recent... Uh, yeah, add that. Oh, so quiet now. And uh, ambient wither skeletons, let's add that. And let's add uh, the wither skeleton step as well. Okay, should be completely silent now. That's good. And that, we can go and see if there's any actual skulls being created. It's these I'm almost sure of generating the swords. Yes, we are generating wither skeleton skills. That's good, because that's exactly what we need. Um, unless there's any way to actually create them by another method. Um, let's look at recipes. We can do it using withering souls, but we're not added mystical ag ag agraditions yet. So it is pretty much just going to be dropped from wither skeletons. Fine. Which is okay, because that's going to continue to occur. Uh, wither ash. Oh, can we actually use that for any purposes? Nether star generators. Yeah, we're not quite to nether star generators yet, but um, nocturnal powder, no. Okay, so I'm going to have to wait a little while and let's see if we get a decent amount of wither skeleton skills. Just one's going to, well, just two more going to be good enough for me. I think our crusher is going to need a little bit more help when it comes to picking up loot. Um, <laughs> it's going to be terrible. Um, oh dear, this is awful. This is awful. Uh, yeah, we're probably going to need to use a vacuum hopper, and we definitely need to exclude stone swords. They're just dropped by wither skeletons, it seems. So, yeah, um, they're being pulled out of the system. And you can see almost never are we getting wither skeleton skills. So I'm going to look for something um, that can maybe behead them. Never mind. The chest actually ended up with 15 in there, so we have more than enough that I don't need to think about creating anything manual, which is even better as far as I'm concerned. And I've also got this item, or oh, vacuum hopper here, just in case. 
and then I'm just going to set up another item conduit and we just need to connect this to uh, the output. I'm not going to worry about the the um, the fluid side, but we, we will be able to do that if we want to. And then I'm just going to set on this insert side, I'm going to set this up with a filter. Filter is going to be a blacklist filter. It's going to blacklist stone swords and I'm going to set it to ignore metadata. Hopefully that actually will solve the problem and we don't, don't end up with all these stone swords in our system and uh, that's going to be fine. Uh, we're also going to want to basically on this one, which is the trash can on the other, the other side, the only thing we are going to basically let it do is actually have stone swords. So I'm going to just go and get another item filter, which is a simple enough recipe. Uh, item filter, just a basic one should do this, I think. Yep, there we go. And let's we'll set that up as well. Again, ignoring the metadata, just to basically uh, make sure the, the trash can only accepts these. So on the insert side, we want to set this to filter, whitelist, stone swords, and ignore metadata. Let's see if this actually does work or if I delete stuff. Uh, there's nothing in, in here I particularly want, just in case, worst case scenario. Drops of evil, I guess I don't really need those anymore either, but uh, let's get it going. So let's just turn on um, extract all. Okay, and then we could probably speed that up if we want to, but insert on this only and insert on this only and extract all here as well. And that should be everything. Yeah, it's starting to pull stuff in. You can see here it is having problems with this particular stone sword. It's slightly different because it's not damaged. So I'm just going to add that to the filter as well, the non-damaged version. And uh, that should start removing them, or at least once it gets through this, it should start removing them. There they go. Off they go. And everything else just start adding to our system. So that's entirely automatic as well. Fine. So you're done. And um, we also have that vacuum popper just helping with everything in there. So that should all work. And uh, oh, hang on. Did we run out? Yeah, I may have run this out of essence. <laughs> But it will naturally refill anyway, so that's that's not a problem. Uh, we did get 15 with skeleton skills. You know what we're going to do with those? Yeah, we're going to go to the nether because I don't want to fight this thing over here. Okay, I've lit everything up. We're over in a random spot just near a blaze spawner just so we got this going. And then we'll just drop uh, our usual construction in place. And let's, well... Let's see how well my existing uh, shuriken deals with this. It should be fine. But uh, again, I always make sure I empty out my inventory, dump it all into our nice little safe stash while we, whoops, while we get this going. Helps if you put them in the right place. Uh, let me just get my uh, pickaxe back. There we go. Put that back away again. And where's, where's that with the skeleton skull gone? There we go. All right, ready? I think so. Okay, time to go and run away a little bit while it explodes and let's see how well this goes. Are you ready? I am, come on, there we go. Where did you go? Ah, you're up there in the corner. So we shouldn't have any problem with the range damage. That's that's not gonna be a problem. It's gonna be more the melee that we need to do. And there it goes. So it's now in its invulnerable stage and we have to go and chase it down <laughs> with a sword and uh, stab it for a little while. Let's go and see. Oh, this is going to be noisy. Sorry. Okay. Health. There we go. Okay. Yep, it's damaging me, but uh, that's going to be fine. We probably could do with some anti-wither sort of uh, like a wither rose or something along those kind of lines in future. You'll see some stuff has dropped. I do have looting three on my sword. Uh, loot, yeah, looting three. And the same thing on here. Well, is that a silverfish? Sounds like a... Oh, it's not quite a silverfish. But hey, I'll get rid of it anyway. <laughs> okay, and you can see just there's just all kinds of terrible, horrible stuff all over the place. 
Um, basically just lots and lots of netherrack that I should probably pick up. Um, later on, we're going to want to um, basically do this a lot better. We're going to want to have a wither killing room um, and the similar kind of thing with that mob crusher, but um, the wither cannot escape from. So I'm going to take a look, see what options we have for that. More importantly, we have Supremium Essence, and that's one of the important, almost more, just as important as the Nether Star, because the Infusion Crystal we're going to have to create in this pack needs, uh, well, the Master Infusion Crystal. In fact, no, that's, that's not actually a problem. No. Uh, I thought that would need the Supremium. Whoop. Hey. Let me get back to, let me get back to somewhere safe, and uh, I'll take a look at that. I thought we needed Supremium. Um, hmm. Ah, we do need the Supremium, but not exactly for what I was thinking. Uh, the Supremium is more for creating any of the other lower essences. Because the crafting seeds... Um, crafting seed... You see they've got the, all these different tiers, and the, the base tier is fine. Uh, we just need to get some Prosperity Shards, which should be something we can gather. Uh, or convert. Prosperity Ore, that's not going to be any help. Uh, it is craftable with what? Anything? Well, okay. It says it's craftable <laughs> with blocks of prosperity, I suppose. Uh, okay, that's okay. So we, <laughs> there's a weird way around of getting to it if we actually want the crafting seeds. However, aside from that, above that tier. We also then need Inferior Essence, which is easy enough, but then it starts to get into the other essences. Now, as we said before, you can get it through Infusion Crystals easy enough, but the other way around is to start with Supremium and just craft your way down. So instead of doing Supremium, you can basically get uh, Superium just by crafting 1 to 4. So that's straightforward to get as well. Uh, in the meantime, however, let's take a look at what we can get with our first Nether Star. And, um, well, definitely not going to be our last. So there's a number of different items you can get with your first nether star or first couple of nether stars that Dragon Egg Miller will come in use fairly quickly once you get to the end. Um, so other things, obviously things like end crystals to resurrect the dragon are going to be useful, but we want renewable with uh, ender stars uh, before we actually get to that point. Uh, ender stars, uh, nether stars. You can make this, which is the eclipse clock. You can spend your time in a bottle with the eclipse clock to basically convert change things to night. So just as you have a bed to convert to daytime, that changes to night. Why is that useful? Well, Astral Sorcery needs nighttime for a lot of the crafting, so you can create that to just skip straight to nighttime. Um, there are a few other things, things like Ender Stars, which lead into more advanced stuff. Um, I'm not going to worry about those for now. In fact, that's one of the ingredients for the Angel Ring for Creative Flight. So, um, ooh. We have Elytra. But that needs a dragon's breath. <laughs> so we need to go to the end to kill the end dragon. Not that that should be particularly tricky now, but um, yeah. How are we going to get to the end in this pack? End cake. End cake? End cake needs an end crystal, which is nether star. Yes. Okay, so we're clearly going to need to do that first. End casing is going to be empowered diamantine. Block of Black Quartz, Ender Pearl, that's going to be fine, I would think, because Diamantine is just... Oh, it's usually just Diamonds, but... <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's an expert mode pack. Uh, I need to keep remembering that. So Empowered Diamantine is going to need Diamantine Crystal, which is just converted Diamonds, that's fine. But the Empowered version, we need Mana Diamonds, Manulin, well, both of those we know how to get, uh, Malachite and Zirconium. We haven't got either of those. Malachite looks like it can be made from crushed endstone. That's not going to help us when we've not got to the end yet, unless we just make crushed endstone. Can we just make it using, like, um, no, what is it? It's like a lava on something? Endstone? Doesn't look like it's available in the JER recipes, but there is there's usually some kind of um, lava recipe on on top of something to make um, to make endstone. Anyway, zirconium dust is the other one. Pulverizer from zirconium ingot is it all just zirconium ingot. Well, that looks like a rock crusher. Rock crusher just crushes diorite. 
and that oh depleted uranium yeah yeah so maybe we're not going to be able to get to that just yet <laughs> okay uh let's let's do that another time for the meantime um we're probably going to want to have that wither builder to be able to basically make more withers but uh, the wither builder itself is fine you know we can we can make that um with a skeleton skills and a machine case that's straightforward um yeah we're just going to get that to make some more advanced alloys okay and that can be done in the background however we're going to need to look at witherproof blocks because there's no point having a wither builder if you don't have a cage for for that so wither proof proof and there's only a few of these I normally end up choosing this reinforced obsidian, and I shouldn't because it's generally the worst choice. It's quite expensive. Um, it usually needs grains of infinity, dark iron bars, etc., etc. I think the dark iron bars by themselves may be witherproof. Um, yeah, chironite. Well, we don't have chironite crystals yet. Nor that, nor this. Hmm. So maybe just dark iron bars with proof glass, which is more reinforced obsidian. That's not really very helpful, but it does duplicate up the reinforced obsidian because that gets from four to 16 blocks. So that is that's quite a lot better. And all we need is some black dye and some dark glass and dark glass is just some some thickened glass, which is sandy glass, which is just sand and glass. So that's not too bad. We would duplicate that up and witherproof glass would let us see through it a little bit anyway. But it does say blast resistant and the alternative option is going to be dark iron bars then I imagine. Dark iron bar. Um, dark iron bars is just dark steel. And dark steel is going to probably require us to get... Oh no, hang on. We can make it in the alloy furnace with just obsidian and steel. That's nice. So how many dark iron bars? We get 16 for six. So if we want, you know, maybe uh, we don't need a large cage. How do we want to do this? Well, there's a few ways to kill the wither. One is to let it drop downwards and then to kill it at the bottom of like a long shaft. Well, not a long shaft, but a long enough shaft so that it doesn't kill the, uh, the wither builder. That's probably going to be the easiest way to do it, in which case... We're going to want to have quite a few of these, which means we want to have quite a few of these. So I think I'm going to just go and convert those over from obsidian. I've got quite a bit of obsidian. Uh, obsidian. Yeah, I've got a full stack. I'm just going to do a full stack of steel, full stack of obsidian, and uh, we'll use that to just make some dark iron bars. Okay, here's my wither killing cage. I don't need the drop shaft because we're using the wither killer. It works differently, wither builder I should say. It works differently than other mods that do this. Uh, other mods just create it in front of themselves and then it needs to drop somewhere. However, the wither killer, if I remember correctly, and we'll see about that shortly, uh, actually creates it above itself. So we uh, are going to basically create it inside this cage. Now I really hope that this thing is witherproof because there's, if it's creating it above itself, that's going to be a problem unless it is witherproof. But hey, let's take a look at the working area. So the working area uh, we can see here is oriented this way. I didn't know which way around it was going to be, so I built the cage big enough to go either way. Okay, and uh, that can be hidden. So it's going to be created that direction. Okay, and then we've got a space here for some dark iron bars. Uh, yep, we've got that space for our mob crusher. So let's put the mob crusher in place. And hopefully that with um, a range add-on. And that working area is larger than this basically box. So that should be enough to kill things. And then we just need to basically provide it with some power. So as before, I'm just going to create uh, our usual setup with a solar generator. And that's going to... Well, that's already full, so that's not going to need very much. And then I'm just going to dig down underneath and we'll hook up our usual kind of infrastructure. I don't know how much damage, if anything, is going to actually make it through this cage. It may end up breaking things on its first run. But let's give it a go and see how good or bad it is. So there's our ender tank. We'll pop that down. That's going to be for the, the fluid. So we're going to want the pressurized fluid conduit. We're going to want some energy conduit. May even need some more of that and some item conduit later, but I don't really much care about it right now. 
Um, that's not the right place for this. Uh, it doesn't need. It doesn't need essence. It'd be nice if it did. If just well, I could just put the duplicator here, but I don't think I want to use the duplicator for this. Um, it's possible, but uh, that's fine. I don't, don't even need that, uh, that ender tank. Uh, we're just gonna get uh, basically. Yeah, we're gonna get we're gonna get essence out of this. So why don't we just put that down there? Okay. And then we'll just need to feed in power. Now I am going to need more energy conduit, it looks like. So power is going to come down here. I'm going to need like one, two, three, four, five, six more energy conduit. The other thing to be aware of, and I've now set this up so that anything in this chest goes into that uh, with a killer, uh, with a builder. Anything, the other thing to be aware of here, for example, if I do this, oh, I actually need to turn it on. Whoops. In my Yeta wrench for a second. Uh, Yeta wrench, where are you? Uh, yeah, the other thing to be aware of is that it, this will build pretty fast. If you are building multiple of these things, you are going to want to be careful that you're able to kill them fast enough, as well as uh, stuff like that. So, extract always active is what we want here. And yep, it's already extracted. They should already be in that with a builder. Uh, yep, you can see that's exactly where it's building it. So there is space for the the headpieces right now. And uh, that means I just need to put the stuff in here and uh, get ready. So yeah, let's just put this in here. Are you going to work? Um, you're going to build one, two, three. And once it actually detonates, we'll see whether that uh, mob crusher is actually resistant or not. If it isn't, then I'm going to kill this manually. But for now, let's see. Oh, it broke out. <laughs> it broke out. Okay. So the Dark Iron Bars are uh, maybe blast resistant, but they're not with a proof. Uh, that killed my Mog Crusher. <laughs> but, hey, have we gotten... Uh, did, did we actually get anything out of that? Probably not, because, yeah, um, everything died. Yeah. So, a bit of a fail-ish. Uh, let me just get back to my um, home. Uh, let's get back to the pyramid. So we know that the dark iron bars aren't going to work. And I'm almost sure that they normally work. Don't in this case. So we are going to need to do that reinforced obsidian. And I will do that between the episodes. Of course, that doesn't mean we're going to need to get lots of obsidian for it. Uh, if anyone knows of any other wither bars, any other wither resistant blocks that are cheaper or easier in this pack, do let me know and do let other people know in the comments down below and we'll cover those next episode. So the concept works. That mob crusher will actually kill the wither. It looks like it needs a bit more damage. That would be nice because uh, obviously it's um, not quite enough as it is. Uh, the mob grinder from um, from Draconic Evolution is much, much faster. However, that is an upgrade from the mob crusher, which is one thing, but it needs charged draconium and that needs a whole bunch of stuff that we don't actually have yet at all so yeah uh we're gonna have to have the mob crusher do the work for the moment um that's perfectly fine as long as we don't you know overload it with too many um uh, well no i didn't get another star uh with too many um uh withers at once okay and we'll get that going next episode. I will show you at the start of next episode. But for now, I think that's pretty much it for today. So we have an automatic wither killing machine. We just need more resistant blocks. Okay. And everything else should work just fine. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you have, give it a thumbs up down below. Subscribe, share as you normally would. More importantly, leave comments for everyone else. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.